Hey, ahoy there, fellow bookwesters! It is all Aaron the Bookwester. Today, well, you heard the pirate beam. The Ghost Ship. I mean, minus the duh. Ghost Ship by Diet Love Rager. Rage? Uh, what a weird name. But it's a great book, so it doesn't matter. Let's get right on to it. The main character's name is Richie. Rich and she is the daughter of the owner of a restaurant, which is, which his name is right here. Yeah, old seashell room. Yeah, old, uh, yeah, old seashell room. Okay, I read that two times. And, and the business is good. They're making a lot of good hard cash. And she's getting ready for a boring summer. But. Dun, dun. She doesn't know the peculiar history of the seashell room. It was made by the captain of a ship called Storm Goddess, which smashed head the the beautiful face of the Storm Goddess is still hanging in the in the restaurant. They don't know the wretched history. The ancient curse of 220 years old. One normal day in the summer, Vicky was, well, working as a waitress at her father's restaurant. Yay, 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 yay. It was all boring and she met a boy that she kind of liked and the boy gave her idea that the storm goddess's head might be hollow. And inside there might be a secret that no one have, has found yet. So Vicky finds out what is inside that wretched hollow head of the storm goddess. And she looks in and she finds. What does she find? She finds a photo. A photo of a man. Hand. On the ship's on the ship's mast, hanged an innocent man. Who was the innocent man? And at that moment, when she saw the photo, the sea drained out. And you're gonna say, the sea drained out, Aaron. You must be a cuckoo book quest or whatever you are. But this is a book, guys. So just let's go on. Uh, in case you didn't know, a bay, like Hudson Bay, is a large lake-like place that is filled with seawater. Every tide comes and goes, and it is usually round like this, and there's a little hole that, that um, spreads out to the wide ocean. My point is, the bay was empty of water, but the entrance of the bay, where the ocean water comes in every tide, it was there, the water was there. It's like it was pushed against by the force or something like that. Like it, it's pushing against an invisible barrier. And Vicky finds another important discovery. She had, she had always known that the Storm Goddess's quartermaster was her um, relative, her very ancient relative. And then, she found out that they had inherited the quartermaster's journal. And when she read it, she, as soon as she started reading it, a ship appeared in the middle of the drained out bay. She used a telescope to look closer. And what is it? It was a boat and its masthead had no head, and next to it were the words, Storm Goddess. The ancient ship had come back. Don, don. Okay, let's get, uh, let's continue. And so she raced there, and now, and and soon enough she she finds out that some peculiar people think that the the there's gold hidden 
on the ship. There's gold hidden on that ship. And they want the gold. Cool, right? It's not pirate because just so but what they didn't know that the storm goddess's crew was under a curse. They had committed a terrible wrong, stealing someone else's slaves, selling them, and making a lot of money, fifty thousand doubloons. And then they had, to, and then the quartermaster only was straight and true, and he feared the wrath of God. So she threw out the money into the sea. But the captain, alas, the evil captain, didn't know this and saw, thought in his greed that the quartermaster had hidden it on the ship. And so the captain and the quartermaster argued, and finally they had a battle. This is the, this is actually one of my favorite parts because it's so cool. Okay, I'll read you this. That's my favorite bookmark, by the way. Okay. Come on, man to arms, bellowed the captain. Show these cowardly mutineers. Save your gold. On deck, oh, who fear God and the law, shouted the quartermaster. Show these lawbreakers. Save the ship. This is the part where the quartermaster's people and the captain's men fight. They have pistols and cut glasses and they fight a savage battle. Who wins? Both sides lost. All of them die. It ends up in a pile of bodies. They're cursed. Their punishment for all eternity. That was for 220 years. They had to endure in their bodies. They knew what their consciousness knew. Their consciousness knew what was going to happen, but they had to replay the final battle of the captain's men and the quartermaster's honorable law receiving men. The fight. The fight, the final fight between the captain and the quartermaster, they had to live it through again and again and again. In their minds, they knew what was going to happen. But they were prisoners in their own body, and they could only do one thing. The same thing that happened that night. Boom, baby! Awesome. So, so Vicky, she, she thought, she was here to break the curse. So she goes on that ship and hears out the quartermaster's tale. The quartermaster says that she that she had threw the doubloons overboard and there was no treasure on the ship. And the man who had been looking for the treasure, who was actually one of the same man, who's the same man who the who, who the storm goddess's crew had unjustly robbed, said, "You swine!" Where is my gold? And he tried to attack the quartermaster, but the ghost disappeared just in time, and the storm goddess broke into a thousand pieces. I mean, that's a dramatic ending. So, in the end, they managed to buy the 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 restaurant from the mayor because it was being leased by the mayor, and the seashell room itself was made by the cruel, evil captain. And that captain, and that same captain had made the beautiful seashell. And then they found out what he had smuggled alongside those seashells. And she, Vicky, had figured it out. In the journal, the quartermaster's journal, it has said that the evil uh, captain it seemed that the packages that he was carrying, the chest, was so heavy. He couldn't have been just seashells. And Vicky snapped it together. She got a steak knife and cut out the nearest big shell. The same shell that the curator who, curate, who makes and restores old ancient artifacts said had, had clicked, had like 
knocked on the seashells saying that they need repairing too. And then she was like, oh, and then she got a steak knife and she cut the thing out, cut, cut, cut the shell out. And inside the shell was a pure gold doubloon. And there were thousands of seashells. I mean, not thousands, but, you know, figuratively. That contained a golden doubloon. Wow. So the story ends with the family becoming stupid, rich, stupid, rich, stupid, rich. And it's a happy ending. So guys, great book. Read it. Read it and read it again. And like always, your book quester, earn the book quester. When you see a ship in an old, in a drained bay, you know what to look for.